I see eyes that are looking at me and I see little bears that are hugging burnable objects in them and there's little rabbits that you could burn incense in. The donkey, because I was thinking a lot about the elections and putting the fire in the belly of the Democrats. And there's other kind of creatures that I don't know what they are. When I put my hands in the clay, it feels like there's a potential, something can happen, and I'm free to find that, whatever it's going to be. I'm trying to see if I can find a face in the piece and see if that's what should be there. It, sometimes I have a very definite plan what I'm making, and I've sketched it out, and I'm working towards that, so that's very goal oriented. But this year I feel like, I was like, hey, it's a pandemic, just to allow myself to be creative and to make whatever I wanted to make at that moment and not to be designing to an end. I'm not loving that much at the moment, so it might, who knows what's gonna happen with it. Sometimes I look at past work and, and kind of think like, what, what companion does that piece need? There's a very interactive quality to the pieces, so I, I don't know, it's kind of weird but it, it's a benevolent kind of weird or something. Well, I made a head. I don't know what's, what her story is, but it just came to me while I was making it, so. There's definitely bodies of work that have been about certain things. So when I did my show, Floating Worlds at For Culture, it was a lot about losing my father and about just traveling through time and space and thinking about Japan a lot more. Won't you my father was an immigrant from Japan. He came when he was 18 to go to Oregon State University. When I was growing up, because my grandfather was a painter, and my father was a photographer, and my, uh, there was, my cousins were dancers, it was just a very creative household. So that was very much a part of growing up and enjoying life was having art in it. So I guess it just was what I was meant to do because I, just found myself doing it and it couldn't stop. To the place where I belong, where I'm the red stone built my house. My studio is kind of where I spend all, all my time when all my waking hours. I have my drawing supplies, my painting supplies, my ceramic supplies, my, my family <laughs> altar. So the studio is, it, it holds a lot of my life in it. And I usually just feel very light when I come in. Like, like I feel, it's like greeting a friend, like, hi, studio, here I am, let's hang out. When, when you're working in clay, it takes up a lot of physical space. But luckily, with clay, because of the temperature range I fire in, I, it, when it, after it's been shown and maybe I'm not gonna show it again, it can become part of my yard. I love to stick the ceramics out in the garden and kind of let them have a little adventure out there <laughs> with the cats. What brings me the most joy or makes me spark is that kind of culmination in a gallery or in a museum or in the public space where the piece is out in the world. When it gets out there and it's arranged how I want it, the lighting's how I want it, that is a very enjoyable part of it for me, is that time. So happy to have the show up and have everything interact and be together in a special way. And it also kind of signals an end 
it can culminate there and I can kind of feel like it had its moment. Spooky Actions at a Distance runs now through June 22nd at J. Reinhardt Gallery. Learn more about Saya at sayamoriasu.com.